Jordy, when you look at how this game started and then going to the overtime frame, just what were some of the, like, the determining factors that led to the result? Um, we played extremely hard. Um, very proud of the guys. Obviously, the, the free throws um, were an issue. They continue to be an issue, and we'll keep doing what we're doing, and we're going to do it better. Um, the fact that we fought uh, against a team like this, um, to me, it means a lot to our group, um, and we know that that next step is going to help us break through against not just a good team, but a great team with an unbelievable player that put up a unbelievable performance. Uh, so proud of my guys. I know you want to play fast, and you talked about just the free throws. Just and what did you see from defensively, and how did that kind of slow down the game for you guys? Um, I think our ball pressure was good. Uh, obviously, this team, what they do is put the ball in Nicola's hands, and he controls the game, and that's why they don't turn it over. Um, we want to create more turnovers, five for three. Right there, we lost because we had nine for 11, even though I'm happy with having nine turnovers for 11 points. Um, but that's the nature of this team. Uh, we shot a wide open shot that I would take every single day by a very good shooter. Dennis made the right play. You got to live with it. Um, and then in overtime, they, you know, they were better in overtime. But, you know, like I said before, very proud of our guys. We play with that energy and running the floor, especially in the first half. And then when you take it out after a free throw, it's really hard to run. So, you know, that's why our pace got, you know, stopped right there. Uh, you talked about the look, the open look that you got, at, I guess, at the end of regulation that you liked. I'm curious, what was, what was the key for you guys in being so crisp and getting the looks that you wanted in the first half, being almost turnover free, one turnover. And then did they change anything defensively to be able to force at least a few turnovers out of you in the second half? Is what you did in the first half something you can buy? Yeah, they, they did, uh, bless you, they did change. Like they put Nicola on, uh, put Nicola on Doe, put Aaron on Nick. They switched all their pick and rolls. Our screening's gotta be better so when we, you know, do what we're supposed to do so Nick still can put pressure on the rim. So that's good by them, but I still think we found a way uh, to get to the rim, especially towards the end. Dennis was very good, very smart, uh, playing at a few situations, putting pressure on the rim, and putting Nicole involved in pick and roll. And again, they do what they're supposed to do because they're very well coached and they have experienced staff and, and players. We found a way. We shot a wide open three, didn't go in, you know, so be it. But yeah, to answer your question, they did make some changes and um, we could have been better with turnovers. But again, like nine turnovers for 11 points, you should have a chance to win a game. Um, the 47 uh, free throws to 27, that's a different issue, uh, different conversation for a different day. Jordan, in a game like this, obviously, there's a lot to, to parse through, but the bench played really well for you, especially for Zaire. So in a game like this, can you guys build on maybe the bench just kind of having the performance they did, just being able to keep you guys in this game, um, given how well Dennis and Cam played? Yeah, it was great. Like, we need that energy from everybody that plays. Uh, we played with 10 players, and obviously some guys ended up with, like, really high minutes because of overtime. Um, but I'm very happy to see – not just Zaire, Nick, but also um, Jalen Wilson. So those guys were awesome. I think everybody, the bench was great. Uh, that's how you make runs, and it's a, basketball is a game of runs. So um, very, very proud of not just the bench, the star pl starting players, and the guys that didn't play that supported, supported their teammates. Um, those uh, Denver's last two possessions of regulation when you did not uh, double team, was that a situation where you just prefer to give up a two than give up a three? Yeah, because we were up three, and I know that Nicola's going to make the right play. And the reality was 
we ended up missing a free throw. That's why it ended up in a two-point game. And I think also uh, Aaron and Aaron Gordon and Christian Brown made threes. You know, like, again, you got to pick and choose who you want to shoot the three. And uh, good for them. They made those shots at the right time. And I would have rather have those guys take the shot than, than Michael Porter Jr. or Jamal. We're up three. We're living in the two and now with the three. The problem was we missed the free throw. And it's okay. Missing free throw is okay. Like, I'm not. That's why they had the chance to tie the game and we shot to win the game. So I think it was well played by our guys. You cannot control if the free throw will always go in, but I'm completely fine. Uh, hey, Jordy. Um, I was just wondering what you made of Cam Thomas tonight. Just his, you know, you've talked about his engagement on both ends and his willingness to play the right way and do what you ask. So I'm just wondering if you thought that continued tonight, his performance overall. Uh, yeah, uh, I got to look at his potential assist. Um, probably I would have won a little bit more of, you know, the assist. But again, if I look at the potential assist, I, I think CT played hard on both ends. Uh, he was engaged. Um, a few of those shots, you know, like I'm happy with him shooting eight threes. Uh, a couple of those shots that should have been fouls that they didn't call. Um, and that's why right there I'm okay with my 47, but not with their 27. Because Cam Thomas right now, I can tell you that he's one of the top scorers in the NBA. And he did not get treated like Trey Young, uh, Trey Young in the first game. He shot one free throw to whatever. Today he didn't get treated the same way. So, you know, I know that, uh, like I said before, the NBA will do their job with training whoever they have to train. I think it's uh, human uh, nature to give a call to a three-time MVP, NBA champion, and then you look at the other side and you don't do it the same way. But at some point, they'll have to look at CT, look at Dan, all our guys the same way if it's, you know, just has to be. But we'll keep, we'll keep fighting. Is there anybody that you know to a certainty already, other than the obvious injured players, that won't be available tomorrow? Tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow. Yeah, Nick is not going to play. Yeah. So and it's basically part of the uh, uh, return to play with his minutes back to back, uh, being cautious with uh, with his body, uh, and this was part of the plan. So he did a great job. He played those. Uh, those extra minutes, uh, Nick, at 26. Right now we need a good rest and recovery, and then we'll take the next step. So, um, again, very, very happy with him. Thank you, Jordy. Thank you. Thanks. Zaire, when you look at just the first half versus the second half in overtime, what did you see and like how did things shift, uh, allowing Denver to kind of get back into this game? Yeah, I mean, uh, we had some great looks, just didn't go in. Um, defensively, Yoga just got going a little bit. I mean, shoot, we fouled 47 times. Or they, shoot, they went to the line 47 times, so it's going to be hard to win, you know, when you put them to the line and they get that many free ones. But uh, definitely proud of our fight, you know. Um, it's not going to always go our way, but, um, you know, putting up a fight, competing at a high level, uh, you know, they're a championship team. So it's all I got just to play our hearts out. When you look at the fouls and them going to the line, just in what ways did that slow down the offense for you guys? Yeah, I mean, it definitely does. Um, you know, it hurts our momentum for sure. Uh, you know, we're a team who likes to play fast and, you know, get shots in the first six seconds. So it's hard. Um, you know, we got to be extra disciplined with our hands, especially against superstars, right? Superstars are going to get majority of the 50-50 the calls. So um, definitely got things to clean up on. But, um, you know, we had some good moments too. So can't overlook that. Jordy was asked before the game just what he's seen you bring to the floor for this team. And you just said energy. That was the word that he used. You said in uh, entering the season that you were viewing this, obviously, as a fresh start. Just do you feel that that change of scenery has shown up and what you've been able to bring on both ends of the floor? Uh, yeah, no doubt, man. Um, you know, I, I definitely feel like I have more to bring to the table, but, um, you know, happy with the start. Definitely 
um, not thinking at all out there, just being myself and playing free. And, um, you know, it's been good. I've been pushed really hard by all the staff here, and that's what I like. So, um, so far, so good. Just got to, you know, just keep stacking good days. Now you were around 30% from three over your first three seasons with Memphis, and I think four or five tonight. You shot it really well. Is there anything differently that you did mechanically entering the year, or, you know, what do you attribute that jump to? Um, not really, man. Um, you know, it's just trusting my work. Uh, it's going to be some bumpy roads on on the, uh, on your journey, but I just always just stuck with it. And um, especially now, man, I feel like I'm just just allowing my instincts just to flow. Um, you know, I put in all the work early mornings, late nights, so uh, the work's already been done. I just go out there and just try to trust it and, um, you know, just bring energy. And if I make shots, it's great. If not, then, you know, it is what it is. But definitely just not thinking as much and just allowing the game to come to me. Zaire, obviously you guys want to win every game, but just do you take – Jordy was talking about this earlier, but do you take pride in how you guys competed against a team like the Nuggets or is it a matter of thinking about this, how can you learn from those maybe missed opportunities to maybe take away and just obviously prepare for a tough game tomorrow? Yeah, I mean, no, I mean, they're, they're a tough team, man. It's, it's very little margin of room for error against, you know, championship teams like that. So, um, you know, we definitely got to watch some film and – see how we can clean up these fouls and, you know, execution on the offensive end, uh, especially late game. But like I said, man, I'm proud of these guys. Everybody who was in, bench, everybody um, just had energy, um, was aggressive, and, um, you know, we put up a fight, man. So uh, didn't get the outcome we want, but it's, there's some good things we could take away from this game. And speaking of Memphis, obviously tomorrow, you know, you're going back there. I guess just looking back at that time, you talked about it before, but just what, what do you – remember most from that era that kind of made you the player that you are now, you think? Man, just uh, so much, man. Just honestly, just the fam, the family that I was around every day. Uh, I love those guys to death. I would be lying if I tell you I didn't miss them. Um, still talk, shoot, I was texting them right now. <laughs> um, yeah, no, those are my guys, man. The coaching staff, the players, the fans, um, they showed me nothing but love. So i um, definitely happy, you know, to go back home a little bit and, you know, be on the other side of them for a little bit and, you know, compete with my with my brothers. But, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, I'm looking forward to it. It'll be, it'll be a fun game. It's going to be a tough one, but it'll be fun. Just following up on Eric's question, I mean, you mentioned the shot and the confidence that you've had and the confidence in the work that you put in on it. Um, was there any mechanical tweaking that you did or specifics that you think have contributed to the way you've shot? Um, Mechanic-wise, not really. Um, you know, I started last year, um, actually, Anthony Carter from Memphis was the first person who, like, taught me how to hop into a shot instead of one-two. And um, that's allowed me to get a lot more momentum and flow. And um, shoot, I, I thank God for him every day because I really feel like he honestly, in a somewhat, saved my shot um, a little bit for sure. Just consistently getting that base and um, that momentum to flow. And I've just been just rolling with it ever since. My summer trainer, um, you know, Joe Bunasar, Chris Johnson, and then now with, you know, Connor and the rest of the Brooklyn Nets guys, I've kind of just. Um, just translated that over a little bit. But, um, yeah, man, it feels good right now. Just, like I said, just trusting my work and, um, yeah, just living with the results, man. Hi, Zaya. Yeah. Uh, hello, Yannim Fournier for French Media. Um, seven players with 10 points or more tonight. What does this number say about your group and about your coach philosophy? Yeah, no, it was great, man. We had, shoot, 37 assists. Um, with eight turnovers, I mean, that's great basketball. The ball was moving, the energy was flowing, um, you know, guys were making shots, and then, you know, uh, when everybody's touching the ball and there's energy, it, it translates to defense, too. So, um, like I said, man, we, we did some really good stuff tonight. Um, a lot of things to be proud of. You know, coach always preaches is shooting threes, and, you know, we got up 50 of them, so I know he's happy with that. Um, but, yeah, no, we're, we're definitely uh, in a, a great, like, unison right now. Everybody's connected. We're, um, you know, we're talking things out in the locker room. It's, uh, it's great vibes and great energy, so I'm um, definitely pleased with that. Just got to keep it up. Thanks, Steve. No problem. Cam, in what ways did things start shifting, and kind of what do you kind of just walk away with as a group taking away from this matchup? Uh, I don't know really. Just um, 
Uh, I guess we stopped pushing the pace a little bit in the second half, and I mean the free throws, the free throw count. They'll, they'll do it every time. So probably those two really. Um, I mean, we fought hard. We had a big lead early. Got a, we got closed though, but you know, got another one tomorrow. So we just gotta watch this and get ready for Memphis. When it comes just to those to the free throws, I know that's been a, a top topic of conversation these last couple of games. Are you seeing any? Consistency with just uh, how you guys are guarding and defending, and what can change. Yeah, I mean, um, being physical, trying to blow stuff up, and you know, I guess the fouls are getting called on us. So, you know, it's kind of tough to guard like that. But you just got to find a way to work through it and figure out how to keep teams off the line. So that's about it. Cam and that. I think the last sequence of um, in regulation, no, excuse me, overtime, I think you, you made the shot. And then um, did Denver do anything difficult to make it tough? I think you guys missed like three three or four shots after that. Did you notice Denver do anything differently defensively at overtime after you made that first shot? No, they ain't do nothing special. To sort of follow up on that, um, Jordy mentioned they changed the matchups a little bit. Aaron Gordon guarding Clax a little more. And, Jokic guarding Dorian in the second half. Did that affect you at all? Like, you know, in terms of who's your screener, who you're seeing when you come off screens? No, we just got to know who's coming into screens and who's going to be involved in the actions. So, but no, they didn't do nothing special that I noticed, but, you know, I guess. Cam, do you personally feel like you've gotten an unfair whistle this season? <laughs> you know, I guess um, I guess uh, I'm not going to the basket hard enough. I guess so. You gotta figure out a way to get the calls and hope they call it. But mm, I guess I don't know. It's tough. Um, you guys have had a pretty tough schedule to start the season. Pretty much every team you guys played against has been in the playoffs at some point in the past few years. With how competitive you guys have been, do you guys see yourself as on the level of teams like the Nuggets, like the Bucks? Uh, I mean, it's still early to tell. I mean, we're playing these teams really good. It's not like we're getting blown out every game. Um, before this guy, I think we should have been two and one. Honestly, we should have won the first game, in my opinion. So um, we just got to learn how to finish games and just figure the little stuff out that you know decides the game. And then, and I think the sky's the limit for us. But I feel like we've been competing, you know, competing real well, taking teams down to the wire. So it's been real good so far. So far this season, you're attempting a career low percentage of your shots from the mid range. Your pro shot profile has been trending more towards the rim and threes. Has that been a concerted effort from you or, you know, a coaching point from the staff, or is that just how it's worked out? Just how it's worked out. Uh, just how teams are guarding me. They're taking away the mid-range, I guess. So I, we just got to have a counter to that so I can get into my spots. Um, but, you know, it's just how they're guarding me so far, just taking away the mid-range, just forcing me to take, you know, the threes and then get into the bucket. They're trying to take away the midi, so. Nah, it's just, it's just stuff that other teams are doing, trying to take away the mid-range. Um, keep pursuing it. You know, they're having the guard keep pursuing and forcing me to make the late passes to the big and kick out. So just got to read the game, and, you know, it'll, it'll turn eventually. You mentioned how before you thought you guys should be 2-1, and one, and you guys have played really hard against some tough teams. Uh, just when you look at those matchups, just so what do you take away uh, that you guys need to build off of, especially when it comes to tomorrow night against this Memphis Grizzlies group? Yeah, um, <clears throat> like I said, just um, like we always do. We start out good and let teams back in. So I guess tomorrow we got to be more extra on it because it's back to back. And, you know, we're just an overtime game against a really good team. So, you know, it's going to be tough. But we just got to come out strong, punch them in the face early, and just try to keep the lead as much as we can. And hopefully, you know, it works out. But like I said, we just got to do the little things, keep the teams off the free throw line, and, you know, keep taking the open shots that are given to us. Um, I think we're shooting 
pretty good from three. Um, taking a lot of threes, so that's been pretty good for us. But we just got to do all the little things that decides the game in like the second half. So we just got to continue to clean that up.